Good morning. Welcome to Tribal Jazz Man Scholar. And I'm going to talk a little bit this morning about an aspect of our evolution that often gets overlooked. It gets overshadowed by the, the large cranial capacity of Homo sapiens. That's something that draws the attention of uh, evolutionary biologists <clears throat> and those of us who would like to distinguish uh, the human species from all the other animals. Um, one of the features of our morphology, that's our physical form, that has drawn the attention of, of recent researchers is the fact that <clears throat> it appears we evolved to be long-distance runners. Um, running is not a, a byproduct of walking. It's not something that we were able to do because we were able to walk. Walking is a very different kind of locomotion. Walking is this sort of pendulous uh, movement of the hips forward as the legs swing underneath the body. It's like a continuous falling where the legs catch us. And that form of locomotion is is... is very, very different than what's involved in running and where we're actually airborne. So, so the morphology, uh, the physiology of running and walking are very different. So we know that they evolved for different purposes. Now, um, some of the features that make us unique in the animal world are the fact that we can run incredibly long distances. In fact, with training, uh, human beings can pretty much outrun any other mammal on the planet, land-based mammal. Um, <clears throat> uh, Human, uh, human endurance is a, is a, is a phenomenal uh, capacity that Homo sapiens have evolved. And I want to just talk about why we evolved and what are some of the features of that. Um, there's a few things that uh, allow us to be long-distance runners, and these are evolved physiological, morphological features. And one of them is this um, very spring-loaded tendons in the legs, Achilles tendon being one of the most obvious. But they're tendons where when pressure is placed on them in a downstride, the, t the energy becomes a potential energy that actually is released as an expansion. So it gives a propulsion to the run, to the gait. Uh, we also have um, a very large gluteus muscle and a very narrow waist. And both of those are features of our balance in running and our, and our strength in, in running. Um, then we also have a, a ligament, a strange ligament that, that attaches from the back of our skull down to one of the uh, vertebrae below the, the neck. And um, that's uh, called the neutral ligament. And uh, it's been a, a, a subject of debate in, in, um, in biology as to what function that serves. And we now believe that it allows the head to balance because it, our head is not attached to our shoulders um, by any bones. It's all... Um, the spine is suspended. But that neutral ligament allows the head to steady to allow acuity of sight while we're running because otherwise everything would be very bouncy. Then a couple of other features. We have uh, perspiration glands over our entire body for cooling. Um, we also are hairless, <clears throat> which also uh, facilitates the cooling of our body when we get very hot from running. And we also, unlike a lot of the quadrupeds who were the, the subject, the prey of our predatory uh, ancestry, the quadrupeds are um, often anaerobic. They, they can no longer breathe when they go to full sprint. So they can only sprint for short distances and then they have to stop and breathe again. <clears throat> we can breathe at a full sprint. Um, the world record for long distance running among humans is held by a woman and she ran uh, over 320 miles without stopping. 100 mile races are common. Um, they're, they're all held all over the world. They're called ultra marathons. Uh, and of course the marathon, the 26 mile run, but human beings can run great distances. And what we now believe to be the case is that this evolved as the, as the mechanism through which human beings competed with the other predators, uh, land-based predators, the, the cats and the dogs and the hyenas, uh, who have large fangs and, uh, claws and can run, um, on all fours, we had to develop and can sprint faster than us. We had to develop a way to bring down game and that was long distance running in what is known as the persistence hunt. Um, there's some videos on YouTube where you can see Kalahari Bushmen still engaging in this ancient practice where they operate in a sort of relay fashion where they track an animal and continually chase the animal out of the shade into the open, chase it, and they can't catch it in a sprint, but they eventually exhaust the animal, and then one of the runners, the, the strongest of the runners, uh, is, engages in the final pursuit, which can last several hours, but the animal basically uh, runs itself to exhaustion, and then they walk up and stab the animal that's exhausted, panting on the ground, a huge 600-pound uh, curdew. It's, uh, it's like an antelope animal. But you can view a video of that kind on YouTube now. Um, Attenborough uh, narrates a, a, a BBC feature about that. Um, but this is to just point out again that um, we have to be cognizant of the impact that a long evolutionary past has had on us physically 
And of course, our brains are part of our physical form and our, our psychological mechanisms are features of our brain that are evolved. Fear of snakes and spiders being examples, fear of heights, things that we evolved psychologically to respond to the Pleistocene where we spent 99% of our history as a social animal. And um, the more we come to know and understand our own ancestry, our own evolved physiology, our own evolved psychological mechanisms, the better we can actually understand the world in which we live. Uh, one experiment the evolutionary psychologists have done is they uh, have a group of electrical engineers in a room and they hold up uh, a, a circuit board uh, without a label. <clears throat> they ask the engineers to describe what that circuit board would uh, would be able to do. And the engineers in the room, the, the electrical engineers, can't, by looking at all the circuits and the wiring, they can't tell what that uh, circuit board would function, f what sort of function it would it would have. But then if they're asked, can you make a circuit that would allow a refrigeration unit to switch off and um, add Freon at this particular temperature, then they, can pr then they produce the exact same circuit board. So the point here being, if they understand the function, then they can understand the wiring. But if they just look at the wiring, they're not able to say, well, what function would it serve? And in the same way, um, evolutionary psychologists believe that if we just look at the brain and try to identify what all these apparent um, behavioral features of human beings uh, are for, without understanding uh, the context within which they evolved, it's very hard to understand the human brain and human behavior. But if we understand the Pleistocene where we spent 99% of our evolutionary history and what sort of features of that environment of evolutionary adaptiveness were um, impacting our, our, our adaptations, then we can understand much of what we see in contemporary human behavior and in, in our cognitive responses to present world. So with that elaborated response on both physiology and evolutionary psychology, Tribal Jazzman Scholar will sign off now. Thanks for joining me.